Kotra. I am the program manager for Project Amplify, which is a joint initiative uh, between Accenture and Microsoft to promote um, uh, to promote and amplify uh, social impact with social entrepreneurs. Uh, today we have uh, on call uh, Natraj, who is uh, the principal director at Accenture uh, for sustainability. Uh, Natraj has been an integral part of Project Amplify and has, uh, you know, worked with our social entrepreneurs. We also have uh, Neetkant Mishra, who is the uh, co uh, is a founder and CEO of uh, the Center for Livelihood uh, for Aquatic Livelihood, Jaljivika. And Anil Kant is uh, and his organization are promoting aquaculture as a sustainable livelihood to farmers uh, in marginalized community without uh, land in particular. So um, a couple of ground rules before we get started. If all the audience members could stay on mute and uh, refrain from switching on their video, um, that would be great. We will have uh, towards the end of the session time for Q&A so you could, uh, you know, Put your questions in the chat and we will uh, take it from there. Uh, over to you, Natraj. Uh, thanks, Imran. Um, a warm welcome to all of you. Um, it's early in the morning, but uh, uh, the topic uh, is very interesting. And uh, what uh, we thought was that uh, maybe, you know, like uh, walk you through some of the learnings. So we are all students of. Uh, uh, this large field called uh, designing for the next billion and we are also learning and uh, we are actually learning with these social enterprises and uh, because of the way uh, we are structured we I meant uh, Accenture is uh, positioned uh, we are fortunate to get a view a bird's eye view of uh, a lot of diverse uh, uh, fields and also now we work with many uh, innovation ecosystems and that uh, no, that has helped us to garner some of the insights which are generic in nature which most of you will already know it's like no like uh, uh, what do you need to be healthy so people all know about it but nobody does what it's supposed to do uh, so that is what no, i'll do i think most of the points so you may already know but i'll try to put it in a context of uh, this and uh, in the later part of the discussion we will have the uh, will the field level insights from jaljivika uh, which can be tied to the what you heard in the first part. So let me, you know, share my screen and uh, we'll start off. Let me know when you can. Is this visible? Yes, Nataj, we can see it. Yes. So one of the, I think, uh, so we f find this to be very, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, um, the, the uh, see, so if you look at the next billion, next billion are the people who are actually coming for them, no? their cell phone is the one which is introducing them to the internet and there's a large mass of people coming into the uh, internet ecosystem and uh, what is happening is that uh, the next billion people have, a, have unique characteristics, they are first time users, they may not be that digitally literate and their window to the world, the internet is, is through a small screen. And, and then they have many other challenges. So given that, but then they are also you know, the aspirational people. They are the people who are aspiring to be better through access to, you know, to online content and the, um, the, the facilities which you know, being online gives to certain people. So if you look at the unique challenges, uh, what's happening is that the next billion people, they, there's a large gap in access to basic services. So for example, I can give like uh, a very interesting example. Like I think last week uh, I was in the, um, in the, you know, in the uh, property registration office for some work. And uh, what happened was that uh, when I went there, uh, I was told you know, that I need to bring in my uh, so I had my Aadhaar card, I had uh, the, all the you know, PAN card and everything else. But then they asked me to bring my uh, voter, voter registration ID card and I did not have it. And uh, one of the things I, they said that, oh, just give me the number of that your voter ID registration and that is, that is sufficient for, for us to you know, continue the process. And uh, so, I mean, as a, as a digital aid, you know, I first said, okay, let me go to the internet and figure out whether I can get my data. 
So I go there, I go to this uh, website of the, you know, the election commission, and then, you know, uh, just to get my number, it, there are something like 20 fields I need to fill up. And those 20 fields are so difficult to fill up. Most of them I do not even know, you know, where I am or what is that, and my names, it could be first name, last name, last name, first name. So it's a mess. So finally, you know, like I could not retrieve my number and I had to get it through some other means. So imagine this to be for a digital native, getting access to basic service, basic information itself is such a challenge. And uh, so that is what, no, like and given there, it's itself a big, it's becoming a big issue itself. Then uh, the, the large population you know, have limited education and skills and suddenly they're introduced to, so it's like people who are used to pen and paper, suddenly, you know, they skip the, the PC, they skip the tablet and they directly are into the phone, which has its own uh, uh, things. For example, one of the things is that uh, when, they, when, when people go to buy something, we we are we are shown a cart, you know, the cart which is there in the in the in the thing which we see in malls, those push carts, uh, where you put in. But most of the people in the villages or the people who are not not are not seen that they do not even know what that icon means because they would they would have never seen that icon. I mean and I mean never seen the actual uh, the cart itself, so they cannot make out. So you have a lot of challenges there itself. Similarly, you know. Most of the people are engaged in informal work. So if you look at India, I think 70 to 80 percent of the formal economy is very small. So all of them, I think the last portion of them are, are engaged in informal work. So this is, you know, these are the large challenges when you're talking about designing something for the next, next billion. These are the things you know, which we have to keep in mind. I mean, that's what we have figured, which we have found out. And if you look at the digital innovation, what is the primary focus which we are all used to the first world or whatever we call it, the global uh, view is uh, labor substitution through automation. So you are using technology to automate, to make it very, very efficient and the improve my efficiency of markets or no, like gig economy. So most of the digital innovation I mean, from a global, global perspective looks at uh, these kind of things. But if you look at the next billion, uh, if you try to you know, like use those uh, mental models to the next billion, it fails miserably because here we are looking at skill augmentation of workers because we are uh, population rich. We means, I mean, talking about the next billion people or pop and that geographies are very population rich. So if you say, you know, like labor substitution through automation, then we will have social unrest. Uh, so here, you know, the technology used for uh, skill augmentation. Similarly, you know, uh, the efficiency of markets is what people are looking at. They here creation of markets. So what we are trying to do here is mostly creating markets, creating access to people who do not have access to such services. For example, healthcare services, how do you make it accessible to the people who need it? I mean, it's actually challenging. It looks simple, but uh, has many challenges. Similarly, you know, um, the instead of gig economy here, mostly it is bringing the people who are in the informal, uh, what do you call, uh, sector to the to to formalize to, to formal, formal, formalizing that itself see for example the credit most of the people do not have credit history so there is no way you know even if the banks are cash rich which they are now they are not able to lend to people who actually need them because there is no way they they get to know of their credit history because they do not have i mean right now they have bank accounts uh, but uh, there is not much of cash I mean, much of transaction happening there there is no credit card so there is no way you know you, or there is no gst uh, what transactions from where you can figure out no, what is the what is their yearly earnings or whatever. So there are a lot of challenges there. But how do you bring them into the formal economy itself? You know, would be the goal for the digital innovation in in this uh, scheme of things. So given so this is the large mental model shift which we are seeing, where uh, when we take the innovation which are very popular in the other geographies and try to you know, uh, use a version of it to the next billion. Initially, it looks uh, you know, that it will succeed, but then you know, when you remove the layers of the onion, the, the, like you, know, you have multiple layers, so you end up in these kind of challenges. So, so for example, you know, like um, I, I, I will talk about two sectors just to give the the kind of gaps we are facing. I think most, this most of you know about healthcare. You no, know, like one doctor per this is in India, for example, one doctor per eleven thousand population. See, this is 10 times less than the WHO recommendation. Uh, and in some states, you know, I think uh, it's, uh, I think it's, in, uh, so it's one per 28,000 plus. 
so the gap is very wide so there is see you i mean the one of the the, the knee jerk reaction is let's open up more primary health care centers let's let's open up more uh, brick and mortar hospitals let's do tele teleconsulting so the i mean if you go that way it's all incremental and uh, that would take billions of dollars to, to to reach people so there has to be a way where we can reimagine the way uh, we look at things and try to you know cross this gap so this gap cannot be done through brute force it has to be done through a very different way which is not so intuitive and that is what we will talk about uh, in the coming you know in the coming uh, uh, slides uh, so so here is what we talk, talk about so this is not about you no know, uh, increasing something which we already know of it's not linear it has to be something which is very disruptive in that uh, so our mental models have to be uh, reset to cater to this kind of uh, what you call bottlenecks uh, so if you look at agriculture so this is a cool case where no, where uh, 80% are smallholder farmers if you i mean for example if you take uh, the two most populous countries in the world india and the china i think 80 to 85% of them are all smallholder farmers and uh, when we are talking about smallholder farmers these are the farmers who are for less than 2 hectares of land and when we say no oh, let's put digital agriculture to them let's put you know that uh, the precision agriculture it doesn't work because uh, one is that these people not able to pay uh, the because of the distributed nature of this and uh, being small small parcels of land we cannot really use digital agriculture in the way it been used successfully in the other parts of the world so here again you know, we have to reimagine the way things have to happen so so these are the two sectors i just gave a glimpse of so similarly you no know, we have something in uh, In, in the various like for example if you take uh, transportation if you take logistics say for example logistics we are one of the most expensive in the world 14% of gdp i mean like uh, is in logistics which is too much uh, so 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 those are the kind of things no we actually encounter with and we have to solve it in a very different way uh, and uh, so they, so whatever we talk about this uh, the next billion consumers they actually you know it's uh, is lot of opportunity for companies and for social entrepreneurs we are talking about uh, when depending on whom whom you look at or what uh, uh, what do you call what kind of uh, websites you see they talk about no that it's a 12 trillion dollar opportunity and when i mean a 12 trillion dollar opportunity what is actually happening is that uh, the un sustainable development goals they have there are 17 sustainable development goals and uh, what these drive the nations to no uh, what do you call um gather around these uh, goals so that no that you have companies you have the nations you have the people for private sector public sector all no coils into it some of these goals so that no that it becomes a, a driving force for all the opportunities to come up here and one of the challenges we have faced here is that or what we see as an opportunity is that uh, some of these uh, sustainable development goal it looks as if no they are independent by itself it's not so opportunities exists when there is a for example if you take uh, zero hunger and uh, uh, let's say um, um, where is education um, uh, quality education so so akshay patra is one of the work which we did so if you look at akshay patra akshay patra what they are doing is that they are using uh, a way to mitigate hunger and uh, in you no know, its impact in the education of the children so as you see here many of these sdg the sustainable development global goals they are not independent of each other they, there is an intersection points multiple of these say for example good health and no poverty so some of the work which we did is has an intersection intersection between these two and the intersection points are where we see a lot of opportunities which you know are there for the next billion consumers and the social entrepreneurs for profit organizations he that as the as the blue ocean type of area where you know we can innovate quite a bit there see for example if you look at jal jeevika which we got here now life below water is what is being looked at then it actually you know uh, intersects with the decent work and economic growth and it also intersects with uh, no poverty so as you see here and also climate action so if you see here some of the work which we are which we are doing currently with the social entrep- entrepreneurs has an intersection with all of these things and that is where you know uh innovation happens uh, and this so this is one thing which we found uh, i mean as I, as i said earlier because of the way we are structured we get to see the bird's eye view of how things are see mindset change you know, 
is one thing which we think is uh, very useful in addressing some of the uh, context here. Uh, so here you see, you know, like a scarcity to abundance. I think this you would have heard everywhere. For a, a classic, I think, which is an often used example is that India, no, is uh, power hungry. I mean, we uh, we have to, you know, like uh, power is in demand here, but we are not able to produce. Coal is very expensive on and polluting. Um, we cannot have a cheap hydroelectric power plant because that also impacts ecology. So you have a lot of issues. So what is the other way out? So we are, we are looking at only, you know, like there is a lot of demand. We are not able to bring in more infrastructure, etc., etc. But one thing which uh, is very abundant here in this region is that uh, I think 300 days in a year you have sunlight. So from the scarcity, if you just shift your vision to the sunlight, I mean, which is an abundant, then uh, you can remodel the way you want to build products around that, and that becomes a, a key thing uh, in the way you know we start off. Similarly, this is an example I can give you. This was in healthcare, which is a project we did a couple of years ago. See, one of the things uh, which is happening is that uh, this also was very evident in the COVID times. Uh, if you look at the hospital beds, uh, they need to be monitored. So you cannot have a hospital bed without the monitoring equipment like this, like the like the one you see here. Typically, you know, it costs something like eight thousand to nine hundred, I mean, nine thousand euros or something like that. So we cannot have these kind of instrumentation per bed, whereas the need of the R is no like uh, we need such instrumented beds for delivering critical care or even care like we like we saw during the COVID times. So what's happening is that if you flip it around, there are innovations around where no like whatever is case like becomes like a all of this uh, functionality is now reduced to uh, one digital patch. So this is a throwaway patch, costs you know like extremely minimal. So in that case, suddenly, you know, the, the, the whole thing becomes reversed. Whatever was case becomes abundant. Then the hospitals which were looking at, you know, putting in expensive hospital beds, suddenly they are faced with, you know, like they can play around. They have a larger canvas to play around. And also, you know, they can also you know, talk about a very different business model for delivering healthcare when it becomes so cheap. So this also, you know, is something which uh, we thought, you know, could be very useful when we start off or when we are looking at a problem with a different lens. So look at what is case, see whether whatever is abundant and then try to design solutions around those abundant uh, activities and that will be you know, more useful for the next billion consumers. So one of the things which we typically face is that how we, I mean, this is the mental model which all of us go through uh, because we are very, you know, like we love technology and uh, that's the way we think through. How do the products we, we make meet the customer needs? But this is what you know, we all think about. But what is happening now is that there is a lot of technology which is available now, which helps us to think like this. So it's just you know a matter of uh, so people say you know that uh, people can be happy by shifting just their mindset. This is very similar to that. Just shift your mindset and and then you know, then it actually throws up very very innovative products and solutions for the next billion. See for example how can technology help us reimagine and fill a need? So if there is a need, like I talked about in healthcare. Uh, it's, it, the, there's no point in you know, having more primary health care center, buying more equipment, buying, I mean, we cannot win doctors. So how do we do this? So technology can actually help us reimagine the whole scenario, turn it around and then help us, help us to fill a need in a very different way. So this slight change, thinking change you know, can actually help us in uh, actually doing quite a bit of uh, uh, activities here. So what I will do is I will go through some of the principles which we have used very successfully and which I think Nilkant also can talk about later in the in the course of the uh, thing is that uh, what is design, you know, like uh, finally at the, at the heart of it, it, nothing, I mean, it's not that complex, you know, that, uh, but it's just that, you know, that we need to again refocus, keep re refocusing on uh, what is the, the current need. So fill in the gap between technology and humans. So as somebody was saying, I was reading a book on health, uh, it is what a, and then paleolithic diet etc etc so if you see that what they are saying is that uh, our body chemistry is still no, i mean it does not change so i mean our modern our modern lifestyle is is i think is the last 200 to 300 years no we are in the industrial age and our diet and our way of life has changed dramatically but our body and our body chemistry is still living in the you know the old paleolithic age it's not changed that much because uh, our whole body chemistry if you read that book on paleolithic diet or etc etc you will know, know that most of the time we are hungry and then suddenly you know you get something to eat 
and then again you know, there is uh, again uh, large part of the uh, uh, the day which you are hungry and then again you no know, like so so it's like that you no know, intermittent fasting is what it's all about but that is how you no know, our body is uh, uh, tuned to it so so if you look at the technology which has come up you now i think every i think 6 months something dramatic changes but our human behavior you no know, is not able to keep pace with the evolution of technology so that's where you no know, we can we come in and then uh, we see how do we bridge this gap that is where you no know, we see a lot of uh, value and uh, the next billion consumers with all the things i talked about earlier is actually accentuated their uh, what do you call nature forces people to design very differently from them and uh, once we do that you know it becomes uh, very useful to be taken to rest of the rest of the world too so for example the design has to be discreet it's like somebody was saying you know like uh, it's like when you are driving a car i need i did not know i had to look at the road i had to know how to know Uh, put my gears with auto gear even that i do, do not know i had to just look look at the road and the accelerator and i am done and also know the skill to avoid pedestrians and cows and what not so the design has to be discreet so what we call as disappearing technology the technology has to be less intrusive less there should be less intrusion and cognitive load so the as as we bring in more and more technology you know we want to you know cram more and more technology into something but then it becomes unusable and it's also you no know, like too intrusive so if you look at any application with any popular application you see they would have started off with very simple design and uh, as it progresses you will get you no know, the entire thing in the same application it becomes very very difficult and people do not use it up to some point in time it's very simple very similar to that and we have seen this happen in multiple application they start off with a very good uh, intention very clean user interfaces very less technology i mean very less technology that is visible to the people but then as 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 you go along you start putting in more and more technology and make it so complex you know that it's unusable uh the other thing you no know, is that better not cheaper so as i was talking about the next billion consumers are aspirational they're not looking at cheap you know like uh, knock me the knock down of something which works in some, somewhere else they want it when they want it to be better and also cheaper so the the the, the idea is that you no know, that good design removes complexity from life so this is what you no know, uh, we have learned from some of these activities that we have done here so as i said there are four or five principles which we found that uh, that is very very useful for the next billion which we have distilled through multiple uh, projects in amplify as well as in other uh, uh, things in life design so so design you know, like uh, design services not just products uh, so the idea here is that build build long term relationship i think that's what no, we talk about this and it should be sticky so it should not be you know like okay this is a product take it and then i'm done like we have to build in long term relationship the reason being that uh, the we also get feedback from the users and you know the 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 the, uh, the products can evolve uh, along with the you know along with the the um, the client or the consumers so this is one of the things you know which we have found to be very useful and the other thing you no know, is remodeling not defeaturing so as I, i think this is related to the other thing where we have to remodel i was talking about in healthcare it's not about you no know, like defeaturing something or doing something in to less but completely remodel this the platform you no know, that grows and uh, with the needs and opportunities is something is what the next billion consumers need and it's not only next billion consumers but all consumers need but here it becomes as i said you no know, more and more relevant see data you no know, like uh, becomes foundation of design which is what you know, sometimes we miss this because what we want to know you know is that uh, informed opinions of what will happen in the wild so unless we re- really need to know, i mean have an have an understanding of what, what actually works on the ground it becomes very hard to do something which is you no know, relevant to the uh, consumers at this level so this is something which also you no know, like uh, is very useful to have a focus on i think the last two slides i have uh, where uh, see one of the things uh, we have found to be very useful this is a very i think you would have all heard about the design thinking framework uh, where you know, we spend lot of time in what is the problem itself see what are the problems so if you look if you ask somebody so all the projects all the pro- products we have done earlier we start off with uh, a problem statement and finally when we actually converge after uh, we discover after see what is the real problem we find that you know, the problem is entirely different from what actually we started off with so this uh, having multiple uh, ways of discovering problem defining spending time here becomes very very useful for uh, 
the next billion consumers type of thing because you will the the problems may not be that very apparent and uh, this is where dot this is what we call as double diamond way of looking at things similarly you know when you have a problem and you are trying to do some solutions a lot of solutions come into picture so you we have to look at develop do prototyping do prototyping and finally you know emerge a solution which you know works for the uh, for, for the audience so this approach Uh, where you, know, you go from point A to point B through multiple hoops in a different direction is what we advocate and which we found to be very useful. Uh, so the last piece which I want to leave you with is that uh, when we talk of billion billion consumers, what we what we see is that uh, if you look at the population of I think if you see uh, the population of um, uh, the world, uh, I think seven billion population. If you see, you no, know, like uh, one billion. Live in less than two dollars a day, then you no, know, like three billion live on two to eight dollars, then you no, know, then uh, level you know, level three is eight to thirty-two dollars and greater than thirty-two dollars. So if you look at uh, this scheme of things, we assume that some of these people will be in different geographies, but actually, even if you take uh, Bangalore and even if you take any any of the uh, glitzy, uh, let's say, um, IT company. in the in the all the levels right from the field staff to the you know the persons the ground staff the blue boys who are there the parking attendants the the guards and the ceo or the you know directors sitting there you will find people who actually you know are across all of these uh, segments so knowing who your consumers are are they can are they i mean if you are for example if you are delivering a service to somebody who is earning less than 2 dollars a day are you delivering service for this person or you are delivering service for this person but somebody else is paying for it because of the you know because of some other service which you, you subsidize cross subsidize through that activity so lot of thinking goes into who your actual beneficiary is and then whether they are they are they can they are their ability to pay if they if they you know if they do not have the ability to pay how do you design a service where you can get in other parties to you know subsidize the work for them and then they also get benefit because of you no know, like delivering a service to this specific person so there are multiple use cases i don't have time to go through that but uh, so these are the kind of things you no know, uh, that uh, uh, helps you to uh, see what is the kind of design and what is the kind of uh, services we can design for the next billion consumers so the idea the key takeaway here is that uh, the next billion consumers uh, though they are they have these characteristics they are aspirational they do not need you know a de feature products they are looking for the best of they are looking for the best features at a price point uh, which is also you no know, best in the world so aspirational and people who are looking at quality so these are the two things i want you to leave you with so that you know, as you start uh, in your journey or i don't know where you may be in various parts of the journey but these two tenets if you have it in back of your mind i think you know that the success level and you know the also the uh, the probability of success increases dramatically uh, i think you know that uh, this is the uh, end of this part of the presentation i think the next part uh, i would also request uh, uh neil can to talk about uh, maybe you know that uh, some of his experiences uh, field level experiences uh, on some of the points we discussed maybe he can elaborate on certain aspects much more deeply and that may also you know give you a way of relating back to what we just described yeah yeah uh, uh, thank you natraj uh, for such a powerful presentation may audible yeah you're audible yes neil can we can hear you so this presentation was so captivating and a lot and I, while you were talking i was relating it to the work we do uh, at the ground level and the experiences in this uh, uh, social space uh, so few of the points what you mentioned at the end uh, and it, it is so true for any of the sector like mindset change so mindset change itself uh, require a lot of uh, you know, from scarcity the moment we think of scarcity to abundance it looks like uh, we are having like whole bunch of billion of people to serve and itself provide a lot of opportunity to develop the product or the services more than product the services and that was also came in one of your uh, slide like 
services uh, uh, even the health care or education any kind of thing so uh, in any activity i think this the moment we go with the idea of serving the people or serving uh, the the client or the customer uh, obviously there emerges the need of some innovation some product some toolkit some technology some data as a decision making toolkit so lot of uh, things will come up the moment we start looking for each and every segment of the people and uh, as you said in the last slide like less than 2 dollar there are billions of people uh, looking at the the farming community uh, in in our country or any part of the africa or any part of the south asia i think uh, most of the farmers are as you said na smaller marginal farmers they also need solution but yeah it should not be a very much that cheap product it it has to be a very standard that that should lead their aspiration to a different level for the next generation people and uh, uh, ironically we we see a lot of word like precision farming nowadays in everywhere of course at this moment these technology are very costly but the moment uh, if if is some in some process uh, if it is uh, rebuilt restructured for serving the uh, the last farmer the precision technology process uh, not the technology but the process uh, lot of people will be coming forward to adopt it so example i will say like whenever i started working uh, on the on the fishery thing uh initially there was lot of uh, the the same challenge was coming up the people should know uh, all the technology part which is really very bulky and very heavy thing uh but over the years um, i got a very simple line like by any means let the farmer enter his pond every day that's all and he will figure out what to be done let him look at the water for some time observe the water for some time smell the water and he will figure it out what are the challenges in terms of you know ph ammonia and uh, uh, if if he goes to the pond to have some fruit vegetable as integrated farming model what we say uh, this affiliation with that resources will make him realize like what kind of improvement is needed each and every day and that is how the process innovation the product innovation he will adopt day by day uh, maybe in future he can go up to the like na no, using the iot itself but going to the pond and looking the water body that resources that's his factory that's his production system that's the most important thing and where this designing uh, part the innovation part for million comes through so thank you like you have said many things and uh, i think the more we go as a discussion thing uh, the more we can bring all those your point and another thing which i really uh, started believing Uh, once we be become the part of this amplification program is data as a empowerment tool so like it can become a tagline even in the social sector ki power of data to empower millions people uh, and where the services product everything can be uh, brought to the last people uh, to the any kind of uh, person to, to the user and this data will become the decision making point for the next level of innovation or the changes even dropping that thing so a platform approach where uh, uh, and i am very thankful to you natraj like you mentioned like technology and human being both goes uh, means technology should serve the human being it's it should not be the reverse case so the it's kind of the platform approach the the more the Uh, layers of micro services what you say even in the technology term we say layers of micro services uh, and that is what the farmers uh, are uh, needed now like they don't only do the fishery they also do the vegetable or they also have to go to school or get the you know, medicine uh, or go to the panchayat hall to get their data so there are so many numbers of micro services that people need in day to day life and if if that is bundled as as a platform approach Uh, as a using the data as as a means of collaboration with different actors uh, that will really create a lot of impact for the next million so th th these are the thoughts i'm i'm just thinking and uh, uh... thank you neelkan for sharing it was really insightful and you know if you could tell us a little bit about the work that you know uh, we've yeah. done with Jeljivika with regard to the design thinking aspect that would be great i think for our audience as well yeah 
So coming back to the aquaculture and fishery thing, what we do and from where we started our journey with the uh, Amplify uh, with Accenture for Accenture Lab and Microsoft for research. You know, when we started, uh, the idea was like something very much bulky kind of thing. Like uh, we had started with the uh, computer vision kind of thought. Uh, let's go up to deeper level and bring the high end technology to the farmer. But over the time, uh, we, we realized like getting so much of the precision data at this moment in the aquaculture space is not available in India. So it, it's going to be a very difficult task to go for the uh, computer vision. And then it will require even to you know, fetch the data. It will require a very high end uh, toolkit like the mobile phone or handset, which everyone will not have. So then by the time we and uh, the last slide of uh, uh, design thinking, which Nataraj had said, no, it's problem identification, discussing more on the problem find, uh, problem routes. Uh, so we found out like going for the water quality uh, is, is one of the problem also because there are the route where people doesn't know uh, what all those things means for the health of their water as well as health for their produce. And this water quality uh, impact not only the fishes, but any kind of aquatic plant, the moment we look for the any kind of you know, vegetable or makhana or water chestnut, whatever is produced, it's all depend on the water quality. So we thought let's focus on that aspect. And uh, from where we started the learning our journey of this uh, capturing data using this IoT, then the sensor came uh, and uh, where we moved one space, uh, one, one step more like using this dependable IoT, uh, to understand how this entire IoT segments can be controlled through a, a, a mother unit and, and how the different data is coming from the, all the places can be used for different uh, stakeholder. So obviously this data will be used to provide the advisory services, handholding services for farmers, but even the other stakeholders will also require those uh, decision making points. So uh, it's not like uh, data based advisory for farmer. Then the next level of thought, the thought process came like decision making for the stakeholder and uh, where the even the uh, other service provider like insurance agency, bank, NBFC, even the women's SSG, they, they can become the uh, channel agent to, to provide services, different levels of micro services to the farmers. So that is how this journey started and uh, uh, we learned a lot of things like uh, we also built our the vocabulary. Uh, of using this, uh, uh, how to you know, start collaboration with technology people, how to pivot our idea to the next level. So I will say like this, this engagement was a kind of pivoting point for Jaljivika, where we uh, started thinking for not only the thousands of farmers, but suddenly the vocabulary becomes like millions uh, and the, the complex problem. So uh, how to solve the complex problem? Like, Earlier, we were thinking for the uh, putting this productivity at the first center stage, but now we started thinking like complexity of the this entire water body dynamics, how to solve that challenges. So this this is the moment we started looking not only uh, the uh, not only one kind of instrument. So IoT, I will say one kind of instrument from where we started you know, like thinking like collecting data will be much easier, simpler, but it's not so easier and simpler uh, the moment we look for the Indian context and the and the last people. So then uh, the, the, the next level of solution, what we bought it like make it very much kind of open source where data can be collected from any of the reliable sources, whether it is just the uh, titration based method or any kind of other uh, toolkit, maybe digital or physical toolkit, but data should be captured related to the uh, quality of water body. And now we are, uh, we are we are working to collaborate means we are open to collaborate with all those solutions that provides water quality solution. So uh, the another thing which has happened in this uh, journey of uh, last uh, one and a half year is uh, we started with the mindset like nah, keep okay we are doing some innovation we are bringing some product but uh, after few months it become like no we are not bringing anything new uh, that is not the focus but co-creation co-creation some solution with the help of Accenture, uh, with the with the 
technical support of the Microsoft or any other stakeholder who are coming forward, this co-creation will be much more scalable than just creating an innovative product and no one is using it. So that was so we started realizing like innovation or product something unique is it is good to have in the library. But yeah, the moment we think like it should be usable for the billion, usable for the uh, millions of people, uh, those who are not digitally very strong, how to build their uh, first level of like bringing that, breaking that digital hesitation in the community. Uh, so uh, last few weeks, uh, Natraz, uh, I will share with you, we are collecting a lot of data uh, and then the COVID challenge came. Like uh, our supply chain was stopped, we couldn't uh, install all the gazet water in our water bodies. So as an alternative, we started using the Kobo toolbox uh, as an open source toolkit and a lot of data, more than like 400 plus water bodies data was captured uh, within one month by the uh, women, rural women. So teaching them, uh, it was really, initially it was difficult, but the moment they learned, the, the the accuracy of data, uh, the geographical diversity of collecting the data, it becomes so easier. And now we are thinking of like, yeah, uh, th this is becoming another product. In the in the COVID time, we cannot go to every household to you know improve their productivity. But getting this data is helping us to develop a kind of cluster planning, like what kind of input supply chain, what kind of logistic supply chain, uh, what kind of technology gap is there. And from where it can be bridged. So another kind of a, a planning toolkit has uh, is, uh, we are working with the community cadres. So uh, these challenges are also we have to be little bit of open minded, like uh, no, uh, openness to adopt any new technology, openness to adopt a new process. Uh, th that that gives a lot of uh, opportunity to scale. And uh, as in the our uh, uh, technology sector, we, we, we discuss a lot about the tech platform where one platform may solve a lot of different challenges for the community, for the people. Uh, but yeah, this tech platform are good. Uh, creation takes a lot of time and that we have seen in the in the so many like uh, uh, when we discuss uh, with the people like eGov or uh, um, uh, the people who are working on the education and health sector, creating such kind of a larger platform, tech platform, it, it requires a lot of uh, lot of effort, time, energy, investment, and bringing it together with the societal platform uh, gives a different perspective. And that time, uh, uh, the process, the innovation, the speed, everything uh, start augmenting to reach the last mile. Uh, that is how I, I think this how to bring this tech platform and certain platform together uh, to solve the complexity of social problem as a as a open as take in a world ecosystem uh, is is helping us to think in in a different perspective so at present we are not thinking iot only we are just thinking of collecting any data and data as a decision making toolkit for farmers and from their solutions how we can bring more and more ecosystem partners uh, to solve their challenges the different challenges so that is how our journey is going on, Simran. Thank you, Neil Khan, for sharing. I think uh, you know you you rightly said that initially it was knowledge is power. Now data is power. So the combination of knowledge and data both really can go miles and miles ahead. And I think you know as part of Amplify, also like you said, going from thousands to millions. That's our goal uh, to to help the social impact reach those millions of lives. And so I'm really glad to hear, you know, that uh, you've had this experience. And um, I'd, I'd now open the floor up to audience members to ask any questions that they might have or to share any um, experiences on design thinking and procedures that they follow. And maybe, you know, we can have a d discussion about that. You can either use the chat window or um, if you're OK, you could maybe unmute and introduce yourself and we can take it from there. Hi, this is Vikitesh here from Accenture Lab. Uh, question for Nilkant. Uh, hi, Nilkant. Uh, 
uh, good to hear your uh, talk you mentioned about actually the farmers going to the pond daily and then gradually you know uh, you know kind of they start you know uh, visiting the pond and they kind of start sensing the water and things like that on their own and that awareness actually help them to narrow down and identify certain problems can you elaborate a little bit more on that because i think it almost seems like you know uh, they are kind of uh, getting themselves more involved in the process and then introducing some other technology interventions right yeah yeah venkat so so that is the idea I means uh, the moment we uh, uh, like even in the in the discussion uh, uh, natraj has also said like uh, getting solution from the outside uh, and, and thinking like that solution uh, that technology will solve the all challenges uh, it's very notional it doesn't happen in the real uh, world so it's like no, you 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 bring a product and that will solve like we buy a mobile phone uh, and that will help us to no, communicate with the relative or the friend but ultimately the effort we have to make then the dialing the numbers or the texting so the the the, the, the gadget itself doesn't do anything it just enable technology is a enabler and it enables uh, uh, people who knows how to use that technology so like in the india the challenge is uh, um, we have seen like we have like more than 7 million hectare of water body but hardly 3 million 4 million is used for aquaculture purpose still there are water bodies are exist 3 million 4 million water body additional exist in the india but it is not used for and uh, traditionally if you look at the historically fishing uh, like there was the different caste sub caste segment for the different uh, venture and activity fishery was always supposed to done by the fisherman the, 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 the caste domain was overlaying and uh, the moment this uh, uh, we are moving ahead with the agriculture system enterprise development micro enterprise development now those caste barrier are, are it's 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 reducing a lot but the people doesn't know uh, how the fishes or how any kind of the plant or life is grown in water body like uh, water also talks uh, they also provide you know with their smell with their color they can they can provide you just like our body our human body uh, they, they can show you like what are the changes happening and whether it is good for those plant or those animals uh, or product or not so that kind of realization it's very difficult to get from the bookish knowledge it it is really impossible uh, and uh, visiting every day or, or going to those uh, units the physical space uh, people start realizing means it it becomes like your na, baby it becomes like your uh, pilot location a laboratory uh, you start doing uh, na, more and more uh, practical demonstration uh, how to clean the water uh, how to uh, clean the other surfaces uh how to capture more and more rain water if there is some hole so lot of the management part practices people start adopting just looking at the or observing and being in that physical space so so and this tricks works a lot because it doesn't require lot of you know uh advisors from the outside it doesn't require lo lot of book or uh, advice using the sms services just being uh, with the physical space uh it gives a lot of uh, confidence and the another thing we have seen the moment people start going to you know, their space uh, physically uh, they also start talking a lot from the knowledge of the traditional fishing community who exist nearby how to improvise it better what works better what doesn't work better and that is how the, the knowledge transfer happen uh, so it's it's kind of it looks like technically it looks like very uh, rustic but it works so well uh, and uh, where people learn by doing people started uh, you know, accepting this uh, physical resources as their business unit and this thing we have seen experience uh, uh, this this part of the theory i experienced in uh, uh, bidarbha part of maharashtra where uh, i started working with the few uh, women uh, bringing them to the fishery sector and uh, women and fishery it's again a taboo women are not supposed to enter the water they they have not done the netting uh, but this is small practices the 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 hint we gave them like okay uh, make a small patch of vegetable garden near the pond bund so uh, 
maintaining that garden they have to go every day to the water body and that is how this relationship is started building and now in that part of like gondia garikshiroli all those tribal part there are more than 4 5000 women those who started doing the fishery and not only the fisheries like if some women are having uh, a smaller patch of water body uh, which contains water only for the 5 months 6 month as a seasonal unit they started bringing it like na, for uh, cultivating the seed for uh, other nearby farmers those who are having the perennial water body so lot of this uh, interdependent business activity is started uh, happening and uh, uh, the numbers of vendors who were selling the fishes now they started coming to those uh, you know women's pond to buy the fishes from their pond that is how the money also came in the hand of women normally we have seen in the agriculture like uh, women doesn't have the economic power it, the, the entire money goes to the men uh, uh, men in the household uh, but in this process we have seen like lot of women started becoming a vendor Uh, they feel very pride of na, selling their own fishes in the local hut and uh, showcasing the quality of their fishes and that is how this money also started coming to their hand so one one problem lead us to the the various impact is on the various social and economic stream so th- th- there is no only no but natraj has said and i like so much like analyzing problem going to deep maybe we can find something different the the deep problem could be something different the solution would be something totally different but uh, addressing those challenging those uh, every day uh, that solves the complexity that's great thank you nilkan thank you venkat uh, any other questions from the audience members in fact i would love to have some um, um, not the question but a kind of discussion with nataraj like uh, uh, with your years of experiences nataraj you have seen uh, this uh, how technology is flowing from a bulky unit to becoming more and more micro unit uh, and where the customer segmentation uh, the people it it's all changing now even people are thinking of na uh, the poorest of the poor as a as a uh, service Uh, provider or using the services by which is provided by technology so how this shift is happening it, it, that's the one thing and it's happening like every 6 month as you said something is dramatic is happening uh, but do you also see like uh, this technology uh, usability is only with a limited mass those who knows doing it and one segment of the people they don't know how to operate they don't know how to know this uh, meaning of the data uh, so how to empower uh, that segment isn't it there is a role of some technology service provider also to uh, you know bring that skill set uh, to people those who don't use it no this is an interesting question because uh, i think i think i don't know which movie they said no that power of the common man and all that so like uh, yeah. So I, I was actually talking to uh, a farmer uh, in Bangalore. He is in Davangere, and he has become an entrepreneur. He is a very famous entrepreneur who, who has invented the solar insect trap. Uh, it's a very different trap. So I had gone there to buy that from him, and uh, I was I mean, the, the way he was using WhatsApp. So for example, he's he's an out and out farmer, and uh, when he was using WhatsApp. he used to get um, at least uh, he said he is getting like something like 200 to 300 messages per day because he is very active uh, and then i was asking him how does he respond because you know, either he has to use kannada uh, keyboard which is actually you know, not that uh, good or you know, he has to type in english which you know, he is not that familiar so then i realized that uh, what he does is that he uses the you know the voice record and then replies back so what i have seen is that uh, the people if we observe them carefully they actually have found out a way of uh, circumventing the you know the the gap and if we observe them carefully and try to know you know what you call improve upon that that will be something you know which will be very good for example there are a lot of uh, i think one of the things you said that how do you empower them there is something which is going on on uh, this voice recognition see in india you no know, we when we speak a language we speak in english 
in the i mean in the same sentence you will have mixture of multiple languages and uh, so so microsoft has done some work i think on that i think you no know, and then uh, uh, where you, know, you can recognize that kind of a language which you know, none of the other pieces support either they recognize one type of language or you no know, like uh, those kind of uh, things so technology now is evolving it's just that you no know, that uh, the designers who can actually keenly observe and if they bridge the gap then they will be the, they will be it's like winner take all they can actually take away this and the digital divide is happening but then uh, i think the what we i mean at least this is my perspective my personal perspective is that uh, the people who are facing the digital divide they are finding other innovative ways to know to circumvent that and that as i as i'm again saying that if we observe those trends i think that will itself we feed back to the technologies to see how they can innovate even more and remove the divide yeah thank you natras yeah it's, it's it's something like it's like a social process what we encounter every day uh, the solution cannot be adopted by people in day one but yeah through observation the situation get improvised yeah, yeah. great so if there are uh, no other questions from audience members, then we can wrap up. I would request you to please fill out the form. Uh, there's a feedback form that we've put in the chat uh, for the audience to help us with our next uh, you know, webinar. And uh, I'd like to thank Neil Kant and uh, Natraj for their time and really their, their insights and for sharing their insights and experiences with us. This has been truly uh, great. Thank you both so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank and thanks for giving us an opportunity to you know to discuss with Neil Kant and others. And uh, I think you know some of the things we discussed, uh, uh, or at least some of the insights, may be you know useful to the larger audience and uh, uh, to the you know the the next cohorts which come up uh, in Amplify. And uh, hopefully, you know we can take it from there. Thank you, Simon. Thank Definitely. you, Natras. Bye. Thank you.